Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Falco maintainer track. We have a full house here and five maintainers. Myself, I'm Melissa, Luca, Jason, Carlos, and Hendrik. We have a lot of content to cover. Let's get started. If you have never heard of Falco, think of it as security cameras for your operating system to detect harmful behavior. Falco uses rules to define behavior, allowing you to customize them for your needs. From a technical perspective, Falco resides low on the stack at the Linux kernel layer using modern technologies like Extended Berkeley Packet Filter, eBPF. It's a pretty cool way of doing kernel programming, which raises the question, why do we need kernel programming in the first place? Looking back to what eBPF does, it can attach to Linux kernel trace points to monitor system calls and more. You may ask yourself, what are system calls and why do we need them to detect cyber intrusions? So if you really think about cybersecurity, if you attack the system, like the way, think of an operating system at the lower kernel level with all the applications running on top. And there's an analogy, you can think about it if you've watched Stranger Things on Netflix. Imagine it like being an underworld and an upper world with a gateway in between. So system calls are the API or largest gateway to ask the kernel for permission to interact with hardware such as accessing memory or opening a file from disk. Falco hooks into system calls to detect malicious behavior and sent an alert from the precise location on the stack where it's the most beneficial to send an alert from. And uh, furthermore, Falco lets you um, customize your deployment with your custom rules and uh, that way you can determine um, what is happening in your environment. And we as maintainers, we benefit from Falco to make our deployment more stable and scale it out more. And um, there's also another aspect to it. If you um, want to, um, so besides system calls, there is a lot more to Falco. Starting from the past year, Falco introduced a new plugin system that basically allows everyone to develop extension for Falco and basically adapt the tool to many more use cases. This mainly gives us the opportunity to pipe new data sources into Falco and uh, write security rules on top of those. One specifically important new data source type is, for example, cloud logging, so that you potentially can use that to write security rules in services like Amazon CloudTrail or Kubernetes Audit Logs. Starting about examples of those integrations, those two that I mentioned were one of the first ones. We also have one for GitHub and one for, from Okta, just to mention some of the few official ones that we support. And there are others maintained currently and developed by the community that, is gonna, uh, that are gonna be available in the near future. Now, Luca, can you tell us more about your experience about being a Falcon maintainer? Sure, thanks, Jason. It's really, of course, an honor, and uh, it's been awesome being a, a Falcon maintainer and being able to maintain such as sensitive uh, and cool project. And if there's one thing where I hope I'll be able to get these super smart and cool people and help them and help the community, help the users, I think it's probably sleeping a tiny bit better at night. Uh, not by just being boring, but by caring about the security of the Falco project. So uh, you, we know, like Melissa just said, that Falco needs to monitor system calls, needs to run with high privileges. And this is uh, something that you need to do. You cannot really uh, get around this problem. So uh, we need to care about the security of the Falco project itself, of our code, of everything more than maybe other workloads that uh, we are running on our cluster because, uh, uh, you know, one vulnerability in Falco could be much scarier than a regular vulnerability. Mm -hmm. So I, I am very happy to help lead, to help uh, uh, organize uh, and to contribute to every security project that we have going on in Falco. For example, uh, we just concluded an audit uh, uh, with Quarks Lab, uh, that's uh, uh, a security company with security experts that did a great case study where you can see how, uh, first of all, our code base uh, is from a security standpoint. And on the other hand, uh, you can see 
how you, we can apply even more static analysis, and we have now like 20 checks, but we can add more, and uh, how we can build dynamic analysis, which is super challenging to do. If there are some dynamic analysis experts uh, and enthusiasts here, I'd really like to talk, because uh, that's going to be a very cool project, uh, and you can see the case study in the, in the report uh, that, uh, that they made for us. So, and, uh, and uh, of course, uh, we are learning really a lot about every type of security. We all heard uh, about uh, supply chain security, of course, we know. Uh, and uh, we want to get Falco to get the best uh, and the most up-to-date uh, uh, supply ch uh, chain security standards uh, and tools uh, in everything that we build uh, and uh, we, we get. I can say I'm not a super expert here, but fortunately we've got uh, plenty of experts in the community that are currently helping us uh, to get uh, the proper signatures uh, and all the proper uh, standards uh, set in place. And speaking about learning something new, uh, we've got here our latest addition to the, maintainer, the core maintainer team, uh, that uh, is Melissa that already uh, introduced herself. She has not been there for long, but she, uh, I'm sure she already learned a lot. So Melissa, would you like to share with us something cool that you learned since being a maintainer? Yes, yeah, so as the newest maintainer, having come from being an adopter, I'm still a power end user, but now I'm also exposed to the challenges other companies are facing. And among these challenges is to need to scale up a lot more amidst remarkable variation in workloads across companies. The upcoming Falco release introduces new mechanisms to select the system calls that you're interested in. Specifically, Falco now only traces the system calls from each Falco rule, along with a set of additional system calls that you need in the background to correctly monitor spawn processes or network connections and create Falco state. Notably, the state engine is used to retrieve historical parent process lineages in real time. And this is a big deal to write powerful detections. As a result of these optimizations across multiple areas, we as end user benefit from a more robust, resourceful and customized production deployment. Okay, what is the most impactful thing I have learned? I just talked about it in the next question, if we change the slide, Jason. How do you spend your time and balance priorities? How do I spend my time? Um, I think uh, things changed a lot since I joined first the community about two years ago. We now have many, many more contributors and a bunch of more maintainers from different organizations as well. Working full time on the project, I usually split equally my time between writing code, code reviews, and taking part of the decision process. And I personally maintain most of the code repositories of the Falco project, but other maintainers just prefer to just commit to one repository depending on how, many time, how much time they have uh, to dedicate for the project. Question is, how are decisions being made? We usually go in an asynchronous fashion, so we either go between uh, private communications, uh, between maintainers. Most of the stuff happens on GitHub, either on public GitHub issues and GitHub uh, PRs, talking with contributors. Uh, we usually gather some feedback on the community channels, such as the one we have on Slack. When thing gets more serious, because there is a, you know, a more relevant work to, to do, we will go for a written proposal and eventually for a voting when you know, it's necessary. And we also have open initiatives and working groups uh, in case of all those working streams that require more than one week to be completed. Um, examples of, of success of this kind of initiatives were the secret rotation that we went through over this winter after the CI incident, and um, the supply security chain, uh, sorry, <laughs> supply, supply, uh, security supply chain, sorry, <laughs> working group that we're having right now. Uh, how can we make sure that everyone's opinion is respected? So uh, we do have an open governance and we went through like a big review of those documents back in August 2022. We tried basically to polish the documents, learning from past points of ambiguities, trying to gather feedback from everyone in the community and respect everyone's feelings and opinions. Uh, we also got a lot of help from the tag contributor strategy, so huge thanks to them for this. And uh, usually we go for lazy consensus whenever applicable. Whenever there are cases of disputes or you know, biggest decisions to, to be made, we go for a solid uh, scheme of voting. About the roadmap of the project. So most of it happens on GitHub. So we use GitHub milestones on Falco and all the core repositories of the project to decide and track down uh, you know, among maintainers what are the issues and the PRs and the features that are gonna fit in the next few Falco releases. 
We are also about to establish a monthly maintainer call so that the biggest stakeholders are always aware of the, you know, the current problems and decisions. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Carlos, can you tell us more about uh, uh, how can others be involved in the project? Yeah, sure. Uh, as uh, Falco is a CNCF uh, project, uh, and uh, we have like a community calls and all stuff, but how you, if you are interested to work on the Falco project, how you can join. I would say like my experience when I started contributing to, to Falco was like joining the, in the first place the community calls, the community meetings every week, and then start like uh, checking the repositories and see which ones like Falco have uh, like several code repositories. It's not only that Falco itself is written in C++, but I don't know C++, but there is other projects inside the Falco ecosystem that is written in other languages that you can help. Then you come to me and say, ah, but I don't know how to code. Like, we don't, you don't need to how to C++ or Go or any other language. You can help in triage issues in the Falco uh, issues we have, like in, in bug, uh, like the reproduce the bugs they have. If you are more expertise in, in testing area, you can help us to test Falco itself and the other tools. You also can help uh, in writing, like uh, checking the documentation and see if that is like up to date or not, if it's make it sense or not, and then you can help on the, those parts as well. There is several areas that you can uh, help, and it's not only by uh, doing code, you can do in other parts as well. And also, you can join the, the Slack channel and help the, the community also uh, answering questions and all this stuff. Um, next one. And what's the benefits uh, to your organization from the perspective of a maintainer, Henry? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, right this one. So, um, thanks, Carlos. Um, I started mid last year um, opening an issue um, for the uh, Falco Lips community in order to get uh, the BBBF drivers enabled for an architecture called S390, S390X or called uh, Z-Systems Linux 1. Just a quick question to the audience. Please raise your hands who have heard about S390X. Oh, excellent. <laughs> so based on this, this was a really great point in time because also the community started to work on the modern PPPF. So this modern PPPF driver actually is using the uh, compile once run everywhere paradigm. So we Improving this make it easier when it comes to deployment so that we do not need to, uh, need to recompile the, the kernel uh, to bring updates. So it took me about half a year to um, enable the PPF driver, the old one, for our architecture because our architecture has a really strict isolation between kernel and user space. So I have to review each PPF probe read function and to divide it, is it the kernel data to be read? or is it um, data from user space to be read? So I think that was from my side and from, from my company's side as part of a product enablement, a really great benefit. The other thing I think my benefit from, our com from my company to you is about the give back from a technical point of view to have lots of reviews, writing test cases for a modern, a modern PPF and also driving and fusing the S390 architecture in this project. So, Melissa, I have my Falco uh, drivers running. What happens on day two? First of all, congratulations on making to day two, because if something goes wrong, it goes wrong right after deploying. So always remember to never deploy on a Friday. <laughs> Going back to day one, setting yourself up for success requires clear thinking about what matters most to your organization and a close collaboration with your system admins or site reliability engineers. It is very crucial to have meaningful resource utilization metrics in place, such as CPU and memory usage, in order to derive a shared understanding of the constraints in your environment. Number one priority is definitely to not break production and perform constant regression tests to improve stability and catch potential issues earlier before rolling out to production. As a maintainer, maintaining our deployment is now more simple because we upstream features that support stability and performance, such as the newly introduced specialized metrics around the work Falco needs to do to keep up with the kernel event pipe. And that way we ensure 
that we can use Falco. Switching gears, improved threat detection capabilities are also of utmost importance to us maintainers. And essential partnerships with offensive security teams and incident responders provide valuable feedback, helping and pushing us to go deeper and be more adventurous in detecting cyber threats in a more robust manner. If you do not have access to such resources, the internet can be an excellent guide to simulate the top cyber threats, and that way you can perform end-to-end -end tests. Another substantial amount of work is to operationalize Falco alerts with high-quality incident response runbooks. For the security analyst, what matters most is to shrink key information down to what, what's on top of their mind, and this includes knowing who owns the workload and in what context the alert triggered. Falco simplifies these steps because, especially for a Kubernetes, Falco knows about containers, pods, and namespaces, and also the context around each system call. For example, did the event happen over an interactive shell, or was a new binary involved? And there is a long list of other examples. So Falco allows you to augment each Falco log already on host, and therefore you can speed up the whole incident response process, which I personally think is pretty cool. The next question we have is, Luca, I think it's for you. So what are recent wins to catch more bad stuff and make it easier to use Falco? Thanks uh, again, Melissa. And uh, well, of course, uh, I'm kind of an enthusiast when it comes to bad stuff. So if I had a shell on one of your clusters, purely hypothetically, I might want to you know, drop my binary and do bad stuff with it. I know, I know if there's security guys around and security people, they, you will know that, uh, of course, that's not the only type of attack, uh, but as a defender, I think that's one of the first things that I want to look for. If someone drops a binary and then runs it immediately. Sometimes it's, it's even a, a regular, it's even regular workload, but uh, most of the times it can be an attack. And I'm very happy to share that we have two more ways to detect this situation, because if you try to do it, you will notice that it's not that trivial to detect. But we have several ways in Falco. And uh, out of the new ways, uh, one is, uh, involves the overlay file system of a container, where you take a look at that writable layer that's on top. And uh, the other takes a look uh, at uh, even the time where executables are spawned uh, on top of uh, the is actually writable flag that we had uh, previously that tells you if a uh, binary is both writable and executable by the user that is spawning it. If you know something about memory mm, safety, you know that there is a kind of a parallel with files. And, um, and yeah, in this way, you can combine these signals and you can combine these rules uh, to get uh, whatever you want to find this little happy dumpster fire situation before it, uh, it can escalate. And also, I really like when Falco can get a tiny bit easier to use. So uh, before, we had to pretty much, uh, when we wanted to ship our rules to our fleet of Falcos, we had to either roll out our custom solution or we had to restart the Falco pods and change the config maps. Uh, we know that since Falco doesn't really have a, a backend, uh, we, we cannot push rules, uh, but we wanted to make it a little bit easier. And uh, uh, we decided to support uh, the way that we use uh, to, distrib to distribute uh, container images, that is uh, OCI artifacts. Uh, a lot of CNCF, produ CNCF projects are using those, uh, and uh, they're pretty handy. They support signatures, uh, they're, they're, they're rather cool. So now, you can uh, have a workflow, uh, a workflow that pushes from your CI CD, like we use GitHub Actions, but you can use uh, whatever you want, your rules to your container registry, and then have Falco automatically pull those rules, uh, either at startup or even update it if, if, if you want, uh, from your container registry, being that public, uh, being that maybe air-gapped uh, or private, uh, it doesn't matter, as long as it's a compliant container registry like Quay, or GitHub container registries, or many others, it's, uh, it's, going to, it's going to just work. So we are adding a lot of cool stuff and a lot of support for uh, very, very cool things. And the, uh, the thing that made Falco easier to use that I like the most, I think, is, uh, of course, uh, also the new eBPF probe that Hendrik mentioned before. 
but uh, now we support a lot of things. We support the kernel module for all the kernels. Uh, we support the modern probe uh, that you just press a button and it works, but how are we even testing all this stuff? Uh, and uh, Hendrik mentioned before that uh, he is interested in that and is helping a lot the project with that. Thanks. Thank you, Luca. And indeed, um, with my work, um, it really comes to testing. So I'm happy that uh, there are a lot of couple of CI changes happening in the last couple of weeks. One thing is that we introduced end-to-end um, -end testing frameworks uh, to cover the end-to-end -end view as well as unit testing. And um, as I mentioned earlier, with the wor beginning work of the modern eBPF probe, we implemented this call by this call and always added um, a couple of test cases for this. So this was really the, the, the base uh, for the modern eBPF uh, driver. And in the last, um, I guess, two months, three months, uh, this modern PPF test suite has been changed to cover the old PPF probe as well as the kernel PPF probe. So we have now a combined uh, test suite for every syscall that covers all three um, FICO LIPS drivers. So with that said, we also faced a couple of inconsistencies between those drivers, and I would like to give you the, the chance and the opportunity to help us here uh, looking at those issues and may become a contributor to the project. So with that, up to Carlos, uh, please let us know how FICO integrates with other CNCF projects. Yeah, uh, Falco itself, like it generates a lot of information and we have another project inside the Falco uh, organization that is called Falco Sidekick that uh, collects and then you can uh, output those informations to several uh, applications or several options that you can, you can even output the, the, the alerts and messages from a Slack channel to a Kafka queue, you can do whatever you like. That is, we support a lot of uh, CNCF and NATs and other stuff that you can connect uh, all the information that flows to, to the system you want to support and we want to, to collect metrics. Uh, for that, let, let's see what's next in Falco that we are planning to do in the following months. Yes. So for the next FARC release, which will happen at the end of May, so version 0 0.35, first thing you can expect is for Falco to be more configurable, both from a performance and a resource usage standpoint. Uh, so first of all, as Melissa mentioned, we will have an improved metric system for resource utilizations. So you're going to be able to better understand in your cluster and nodes how good and how bad Falco is doing and tune it up depending on your needs. Um, then, the system call adaptive selection feature still that Melissa mentioned before is a huge performance tuning point that will basically allow F Falco to just use what it needs in the communication and collection of data from, uh, with the kernel. And that's tremendously impactful on many systems, specifically on bigger machine. Talking about the connection between Falco and the kernel, uh, this is true nowadays as well. You're also able to configure uh, how big the size um, of the buffer shared between the two is. So many tuning points. Um, also, we put a lot of effort of Im or in on improving quality and testing, both on Falco and on the Falco libraries. Um, let's say that both for unit testing and um, regression testing as well, we wanna make sure that each Falc release, from release to release, keeps being consistent with the UX and the expectations for the user. And uh, at the same time, uh, the uh, automatic uh, rules distributions and plugin distribution system that Luca mentioned before was rolled out initially in 0 0.3441, uh, actually 0 0.34 uh, in the past release, but it's gonna be more frictionless, more reliable, and the Falco auto reload feature uh, will be uh, you know, exempt from some, a couple of bugs that we found during the process. Talking about eBPF, uh, the modern eBPF is gonna be rolled out officially uh, in feature parity with like all the other drivers starting from the next FARC release. It's already available for you, you, know, you guys to experiment. Um, it doesn't have all the system calls supported by the framework yet, just the essential ones. Starting from 0 0.35, you'll have basically the full package. So, I mean, it's not battle tested, but feel free to use it if you have a kernel 5.8 plus because it's very handy, just a plug and play solution. And then, um, on the uh, 
planning side, we're working on uh, GitHub projects. So one thing that we are missing, as I said before, is that the information gathering is pretty much distributed over GitHub. So we are actively working on improving that by having basically GitHub projects as a single solution, a visual solution for road mapping, useful for maintainers to you know, manage what's happening in a given release and for contributors to um, basically better understand what are the expectations for the next pack releases and what is the expected timeline. That's pretty much it from our side. So, I, I mean, if I have. Oh, one. yeah. Can we just fast forward two slides? One more? One more? Okay, here. Mm -hmm. So, uh, this is a call for we need more contributors and people who help us. So, let's just go through what the five stages of debugging look like in Falco. So, you know, like the stage one is denial. It works on my machine, it works on my kernel. <laughs> I don't know, uh, this happens really a lot. And then you start maybe getting a little irritated, but the next phase, the bargaining is very interesting in Falco because constantly we have to decide, do we need to worry about this now or can we wait until later? And uh, you know, the Linux kernel in general, you kind of like maybe start talking to Linus in your head and you're like, why did we need to split system calls into enter and exit events anyhow? <laughs> And the next phase uh, can be rough. Uh, should I even be a kernel developer? Am I happy? So we go through that phase a lot. But I really have to say, like, once you get to the final stage and you find a solution and it's all working in production, like, that feeling is actually pretty amazing. So I hope that more of you kind of want to join us on that end and just the, the areas we need more help. So Luca and I were very focused on offensive security or kind of better threat detection capabilities. So. I definitely would like, would like to take a moment to call out that we need help there because as of today, Falco can capture you know, behavior around entire classes of vulnerabilities and security threats, but there are still more gaps and hackers can get around it. And then we need more help for performance scaling up. A lot of servers these days people have have 64 CPUs, but the future is going to migrate to 96 CPUs. So, so that's a huge event pipe we have to deal with. So performance is another one. And then as Carlos mentioned, also non-technical contributions are also very welcome. And uh, maybe you guys have a few more areas we can use help of. Yeah. We have two stages, I guess, on the last one. So <laughs> <laughs> we have denial and we have <laughs> bad <laughs> bad <laughs> There's nothing after that. One thing that I wanted to add, which is a super valuable contribution, is also sharing user stories. So if you let us know how you use Falcon production, what are your pain points, what are the things that you know put you in doubt or that you struggle with when during the deployment or when you run it, it's super helpful for us, even more helpful than sharing like a bug or an issue. So just feel free to reach out for questions, don't be shy. It's gonna be very helpful for us as maintainers to better improve the project and better, you know, program what's gonna be the plans for the next few releases. I just have reiterate again, like I, I would like to see you, some of you or you all in some community meetings, then we can talk. Yeah. If you don't want to join the meeting, <laughs> just a ping us in this Slack, I'm happy to help you. And then I'm happy to onboard the, you all like a fast in the Falco community. Well, thanks for Q&A. <laughs>
it, very naive my response, but we do provide a default set of rules, which is probably the one you're using, plus some custom ones, I guess, right? So, yeah, the ones we provide of are, of course, general purpose. It cannot be like uh, specific to any very specific use cases. So what we usually suggest is if you discover you have a false positive, we have plenty of lists and macros that we provide in default rule sets that can just be overridden or you know extended, uh, which usually happen uh, in a form of, of allowed list. So uh, you can basically start excluding values from the fields in the check and allows you basically to define some behavior that you expect and reduce that degree. There's also exceptions. You can you know, customize the rules. That's the strategy. If the rule is really too noisy for you and that's some legit behavior in your environment, then maybe the, the rule is not for you. you know? I mean, that, that, that's the principle in general. Keep it simple. Otherwise, Falco starts becoming too noisy. There are options if it is really too noisy, like a rate limiter or something like that. But uh, yeah, it's a, there are options. It's a, it's a matter of configuration, basically. Yeah, and I probably have some more, some more tips too. So uh, what I mentioned before, that it's really crucial to be very clear about what's important for your organization. So very often, maybe you only want to alert for production namespaces. And since you can add this information to each Falco log, you can already include it in your filter or you do it later in your data lake. I don't know your setup exactly. And then also parent process lineages, that's a good candidate to tune your detection and also see if it happens over interactive shell access or you know, if other rules were involved, but now we're talking about that you have to do post-processing in your data lake and do a few correlations, but maybe to also give an outlook to what's gonna happen in the summer. So we definitely want to explore options to do more on host anomaly detection and maybe help with these use cases where Falco learns over time and kind of like uses probabilistic data structures and that way reduce the data volume. But those capabilities are a, bit, a little bit far out, but we're thinking about it. No, 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 yeah, great question. So uh, actually, up until last release, uh, it was possible, of course, it's always possible to write the rule. So you can have the rule, of course, uh, if the vulnerability is something that you can catch via behavior events. Remember, first of all, that since you are new to Falco, uh, I want to uh, remember that uh, Falco is a behavior tool. So it sees actions that happen. So it's not a vulnerability scanner, it's not software composition analysis, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's something like that. Some vulnerabilities can be caught uh, in this way. You can always write the rule, and since this release, uh, it's much easier to deploy it uh, on your Falco fleet. Right now, the default uh, Falco rule set doesn't get updated uh, for every new CVE, uh, mostly because uh, uh, it's the it's the rule set maintained by a maintainer, and maybe that gets a lot of false positives, and we don't want people just running after us <laughs> because of tons of <laughs> false positives uh, because of that CV detection. But still, uh, we have introduced the possibility of uh, updating the rule set uh, really quickly. So, of course, uh, right now uh, you will, uh, if something new and important comes out, uh, you might find uh, a post in our blog uh, or something uh, that says, "Hey, if you deploy this rule." Uh, you are going to catch at least some instances uh, of this vulnerability. And with the, with the deployment uh, workflows that we've seen, it should be much easier for you to just get it out uh, and detect what, uh, what you, should, you should have. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. We have a question yeah. there. Um, is there any updates or uh, anything you can say about the user space drivers? Like, are you planning to work on those or, or are you just kind of leaving that as it is? Or? So regarding, so, uh, so just a second, uh, if I want to, uh, if I can get to your question right. Yeah, yeah. So if we can collect uh, data, Cisco data from user space. Right, you, you had a driver before, you archived it. Are you gonna pick that back up? Or? So, so yes. the. So first of all, Falco became more modular. So now it's got uh, a lot of different sources uh, of uh, system calls that it can get. 
uh, we had before, uh, and that's an archived project uh, that uh, the Falco Core Maintainer team doesn't maintain anymore, uh, something called PDIG, that was able to take system calls uh, pretty much with a user space uh, hooking technology using Ptrace. That is cool, and that's a cool example, and the, the, the ingestion part still works, but uh, it's really slow for, uh, for uh, you know, real workloads. Like, if she tried to, to run that, uh, she would say that uh, Falco is no good for her. But, uh, uh, but yeah, uh, we, we had uh, another user space uh, application that can do that uh, eff efficiently, that is Gvisor, that is a, a system of its own, but it has an efficient way of shipping syscalls without uh, need, needing to be trace, uh, and so that works because it's optimized enough. Uh, we currently don't have plans as maintainers to create a new, uh, you know, uh, user space hooking uh, engine that is uh, that is performant because right now uh, it's not uh, in the current roadmap. Uh, but if someone wants and has a need for that, uh, we are more than willing to collaborate. Uh, like Carlos mentioned, uh, these, there are so many cool projects that spark from the community and from experts. Maybe someone knows how to do user space hooking uh, in an efficient way and we can help to get each other to get that. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? I think we're right on time. Thank you all.